Hi, I'm David Oglesby, call sign November 7, Lima, Lima, N7LL. And today we're going to talk about one of the tools available for rig expert analyzers. I've got the AA55 Zoom version, and I used it for quite some time handheld. It was a, a better analyzer for me. It's larger, it's got a larger display, it has big buttons, it's easier to operate. But I found myself in a situation, I had bought a DX Commander Classic, which is a multi-antenna system, and I was having a great deal of trouble getting it tuned. So I did some research and finally remembered that there is actually a software application that Rig Expert makes that is available and it's free. So I downloaded it, I looked at it, and I thought, oh, this is familiar. Well, I had looked at it several years ago, but have forgotten it. Long story short, it is a fabulous tool, and I don't think I could have possibly gotten my multi-antenna system tuned had I not used it. And you might ask why. Well, with multi-antenna systems, they interact. Uh, each wire, each antenna wire, is not independent of the other. So if, if you were to imagine that you would attempt to tune one wire at a time, and then connect everything to the base plate, that's going to be a problem. Uh, it will not work that way. You literally have to tune the system with all antenna wires connected and present. So I'm going to show you uh, a few possibilities here today. First of all, let's go and look at the settings that you want to definitely cover as you set up the software. Again, it's ant scope and uh, it's really version 2. The file name itself is Antscope 2 version 1.3.3. I suggest you not go any later than that because we found bugs on both the Macintosh version and the Windows version of anything later than 1.3.3. So uh, typically you would hook up your analyzer connect it to your laptop. Uh, it's a, a USB connector, a USB-A that you connect to the computer. And then based on the, the tool that you get from MegExpert, it could be a USB-C or a USB-B, which used to be called a printer cable. Uh, then you click Connect Analyzer. The name of your analyzer will show up. You click in that box and you're connected. That's as easy as it gets. Color theme, you want it to be light. Uh, dark does not work well. Uh, so trust me, uh, begin with light, and if you want to change it, do so. But I find that it's best and easiest to read all the data if it's in light mode. You do want to show graph hints, markers hints. Uh, you do want to show the parameters underneath the cursor as you move over the diagram. Uh, system impedance, standard at 50 ohms. One of the things that you will have to do is you first install it. It is set for ITU Region 1, Europe and Africa, and their band plan is different than ours. So you definitely want to go in and check ITU Region 2, the Americas, select it. The other thing to do that's important, or, or at least extremely useful, is you want to show the band names. So with that, uh, we're going to go into a bit more detail. I've got a couple of, uh, of traces up here already where I had done antenna analysis of my, my DX Commander Classic. Again, it's multi-antenna, multi-band. I'm going to take those off screen for just a bit. Um, if you go up in the upper right hand corner, you can see that you can set start-stop start points uh, and the number of points that you want. And what I typically do is set up a couple of defaults. And down here, I've described two of them. So I'm going to start at 0 hertz, go to 30 megahertz, and I'm going to collect 1,000 points as I do the scan. You can set up any number of these, whatever suits you. I've also got one that will collect 2,000 points. The difference between these, the length of time it takes these two traces is about 30 seconds. If you do 1,000 points, 30 seconds, 2,000, about a minute. To deploy, and since deploy this and, and move it up to the start-stop 
control up here. You just double click one of them. So I've double clicked. I've gone to start zero, stop 30,000 kilohertz, and then the number of points, 1,000. Now I'm going to show you some analysis that I have done previously. So I'm going to put them both up. Uh, you see that you can select different colors. Uh, if you do a right click, you can actually come up with a color that's more pleasing or easier for you to read. Anything that's just highlighted in blue here is going to be shown in bold on the, the, the diagram. So you, you see that I have two traces. Why two? Well, one day I was having trouble across multiple bands getting tuned. And I thought that was very strange. I knew that I needed to go out and look at the DX Commander Classic. Sure enough, I went out and my 20 meter antenna wire had broken loose. The, the shock cord had broken and the antenna was lying on the ground. And as you can imagine, that doesn't have very good effects. Uh, well, certainly it doesn't for 20 meters, but it also has very great effects on the entire antenna assembly on all bands. And I'll try and show you that here. Here's what it looks like in, I won't say perfect working mode, but good working mode. Uh, you can see that SWR, which is on the vertical graph here, uh, most SWR, if you look at the bottoms of, of the dip curve here, the SWR curves, they're considerably less than three. And there's absolutely no difficulty with my antenna tuner in getting these tuned very, very well. You also see that they're relatively centered within the bands. So here is 80 meters, here's 40 meters, 20. And by the way, if you ever want to look at this in more detail, use the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can zoom in and you can get far more information. Uh, also note that right at the cursor, we, we set the, the option to show a short number of parameters. So you see that we're at roughly 1400 kilohertz and that the SWR on that edge, the lower edge, is 1.46. If you want more information, go up to this info box and you can move it around so that it gets a good background and you can see it better. Uh, so again, if I stand on the lower edge here, I have my frequency information at the top. I've got the SWR, the cursor. You can see a, a lot more information. Uh, you, can, you can see frequency SWR, return loss figure, you can see the impedance, you can see the magnitude of the impedance, you can see the magnitude of the reflection coefficient. So a tremendous amount of information. Well, there's another way to get this information too, and that is by using markers. If I want to set a marker, let's go to the lower edge of 20 here, I'm going to right click click on Create Marker, you see that there's a number one here. You see there's a red vertical line indicating what that marker is. And look what has magically appeared. We now have tabular data that describes what's going on. And not only is it describing what's going on with this antenna analysis, it's also going to show us the data of the second antenna analysis. So th this green trace is what happened when my 20 meter wire dropped. As you might imagine, if you look up here, what's the SWR on the lower edge? Well, it's 5.17. You wouldn't expect uh, anything much better than that if it's lying on the ground. So Again, you've got tremendous capabilities in terms of recording information. Even better than that, you can go down to print. You'll get a short version, kind of a compressed version of your current frequency graph. You get all the tabular data, and then you have a comment block down here that you might say, I am comparing my uh, two antenna traces, one where the 20 meter was on the ground, uh, and the other one where everything work, was working as normal. You can save it as a ping or a PDF. Uh, so again, you've got tremendous capabilities here. So why, when might this be valuable? Well, if you can imagine, if you're doing 
trimming on your antenna or your antennas, your antenna systems, you can start collecting tabular data and you can actually see what's going on. Hey, uh, I, I, at this point, I've got an SWR of, of 5.17. Uh, I've done something bad here because it's really gone south. Now it's at 8.21. So you can see your progression as you're working on your antennas. If you do want to go back to our first display, I'll call that our normal display. Again, just go to your default settings here, double click. It pulls it back in. I, I want to emphasize how valuable this tool is. I would urge you to go get it and play with it. Uh, remember that you don't want to go beyond version 1.3.3. I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope that you get use out, really good use out of your rig expert device. This is David Oglesby in 7LL. Thank you.